Okay, Village Church, Pastor Mark here, and we are with our worship arts pastor, Eric Damewood. Thanks for taking some time to talk this afternoon, Eric. Uh, what we wanted to do is be able to sit down with our pastors, with our directors, with our uh, ministry leaders, and talk to them so you can get to know them and kind of pick their brain a little bit and figure out what is their whole philosophy of ministry and who they are so you can kind of figure out, okay, this is what makes them tick and what's happening in their particular ministry and what's coming up and all that. So uh, glad that you are here. Um, you've been here now two years or so, just yeah, over? Yeah, it'll be two years on Easter. My okay, first, two years Easter. My first day was Easter. Really? Two For, years Your ago. first Sunday? Yeah, my Leading first Sunday worship? was on Easter. On yeah. Easter Sunday, wow. Yeah, it, was, it was pretty crazy. What kind of jerks would do that too? <laughs> uh, so, so what were you doing? Uh, I mean, people kind of know your story a little bit, but maybe some people don't. Uh, give us kind of your ministry context over the last, you know, five, 10 years. What, what kind of churches were you at doing worship ministry and what was that whole thing that brought you right up to the village? Yeah, uh, so I first started in worship ministry, not as a worship leader, mm -hmm. uh, but I played in a worship band mm -hmm. uh, that was based out of New Life Church mm -hmm. in Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where you were born and raised? Uh, oh. No, I was born in California, okay. but, uh, but I grew up in Colorado. Right. And... Uh, yeah, so I played in like a band. Like the South Park and, kids? What? Like the South Park, like the South Park kids. kids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never been to South like Park, that. actually. But, but that's a place. But it is a real place. Right in Colorado. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so I grew up in... Right trail. Yeah, I grew up in Colorado <laughs> and uh, played, and then I, I played in a worship band uh, yeah. for, for many years and, and traveled, travel, did yeah. yeah ministry events yeah, all over, visit cool. churches, would work with church teams, help their their bands out and mm -hmm. stuff like that, do big conferences and youth retreats, all, all kinds of stuff like right. that. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up in New York uh, to go to seminary. Yep. And uh, while, I was, while I was studying in school, mm -hmm. my pastor at the time, I was part of a church plant there. It's called- You're already uh, married by then. I was already yeah, married yeah, by then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so I, I, was, I was going to school, married in New York, mm -hmm. uh, was planning, I, I had a call, you know, I felt a call in my life to become a pastor, mm -hmm. but, uh, but my, uh, my pastor at the time, a part of this church plant, he convinced me that that should be directed toward worship ministry. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so really felt like over time, yeah, that, that, that calling was right. And so I actually stepped into that role at that church in New York, mm -hmm. and that's what I did before I moved here. That was Apostles. Yeah, that was Apostles. Tell yeah. us a bit about, um, obviously the people see you're musically uh, gifted, you play all the different you know instruments and pull out the funny things and whatnot. So you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kazoo the, the, and the trumpet and the yeah, piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did that happen? Like what, what were you handed a, a piano when you were two years old and you know you yeah. play this five hours a day or what was your scenario yeah my mom uh had a piano when i was a kid yeah. and uh nobody played it my mom didn't play it uh, my dad didn't play it um and uh and so they put me in piano lessons. Like that was really it. Okay. Yeah, so they put me in piano lessons. I grew up doing that. I wanted to quit really bad. Yeah. So my mom said I could quit if I did a year of band, like in the middle school. Okay. So I, it, you know, it's funny. We had we got to uh, go to the choose your own instrument day at the school. Okay. And so I totally pretended to bomb every instrument. To try it out except for the drums because I was like I want to be drums right. and my mom's like you will not play the drums because that is not a real instrument so she made me play why did she think it wasn't a real instrument I don't know you have to ask her <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had a phone man. I know mom, hey, mom why was drums yeah, not a real what's instrument what's going on here um, not, not no kind of big theological reason no no no, okay, no, no, okay, no. Just, just, uh, that's not yeah she was okay. like no that's not real right, I think it's because it doesn't have melody you know it's, right, it's right. just you just hit it it's loud right. she probably didn't want me playing yeah, around yeah, the house yeah, okay. stuff like that so that's how I started playing trumpet and that was really the instrument I fell in love with and mm. I played trumpet all through middle school high school um, it paid for my college yep. which was great yep. and then I got sure. a, I got a degree in composition and conducting mm -hmm. um, at university so what was and, that like, uh, like how, do you, how do you get into that how do you, how do you get a degree in in conducting yeah well I mean I started playing uh, professionally in the orchestra when I was really young mm -hmm. and so I, I, I should have trumpet with trumpet, yeah, I, I showed a lot of promise um, in trumpet, and so the conductor 
really took me under his wing and, gotcha. and just was like, hey, you know, you should consider, you know, music as a living. I loved it. I really wanted to go down that route. Yeah. And so he started teaching me about the orchestra and I just fell in love with that idea of a conductor, mm -hmm. but even more so um, just the composition. Or So right. I thought maybe I'd go into film scoring. <coughs> right. um, there was a season I worked as a professional arranger for, a, for an orchestra. Mm -hmm. And so when they had pop artists come in, mm -hmm. I'd arrange the whole orchestra Nice. For the pop artists, and, and then you started to travel, that. doing some or, or conducting, didn't you? Or no, am I making? That yeah, up? yeah, I traveled. <laughs> um, yeah, like... I spent a, no, I spent a lot of time uh, in Sofia, Bulgaria, and right. so doing, um, uh, getting a lot of training there. Right. So it wasn't uh, you know a specific school program. It was a very small. Um, just you, you had to audition, you know, mm, for this. Cool. And there are these world renowned conductors that would, they would take, you know, a small group of guys mm. and then we'd have an orchestra available to us every single day, all day mm. to be able to work with wow. and to train. And so Sweet. that's where I studied with the associate conductor, of the Philadelphia orchestra, okay. um, for, for all that time. Cool. And, um, until I felt like I, I, God had another plan for my life. Yeah. So, cool. yeah. Good. So, um, so that brought you through New York. You learned a lot of stuff there about probably lay people and ministry and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And then uh, arrived the village a couple of years ago. So, tell us a little bit about um, your philosophy on how kind of the the values of village, the gospel community culture, connect into what you do from week to week, and and kind of give us a little. Uh, behind the scenes of what what is it you're actually working on? And yeah. What are the the goals, the things you're doing day to day? Yeah. Well, you know, gospel is absolutely absolutely central to our work in worship. Mm -hmm. um, there, the gospel really is a reoccurring rhythm in our life, and so um, I like to think of it in terms of uh, how Isaiah six puts it, where. Um, they see uh, Isaiah sees the vision of the seraphim, you know, declaring <clears throat> that God is holy, 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 yeah. um, and and that in light of God's holiness, that we are sinners. Um, he says, "Woe is me, for I am lost." And so we see that we are sinners, and then Jesus offers us His free gift of grace. And so, to me, that rhythm is the very thing that we need to practice and rehearse mm. every week. And so our worship, the content of the worship, is to highlight who is God, who are we, mm -hmm. and what is his grace? What is the good news? What is the, the center point you know, of the gospel, the life, the work, yeah. um, the death, uh, and the resurrection of mm. Jesus Christ? And yeah. so, so that's why the content, everything we do, is so biblically... Um, gospel, Christ-centered mm -hmm. uh, in terms of its content, the words that we're sure. singing. So the gospel is central. Um, community is, uh, actually community and culture actually are going together in, our, in the vision of our worship ministry in the sense that we've chosen to create bands where a, a, a typical worship ministry over the last couple decades has looked like, hey, everybody auditions for the worship team, mm -hmm. and then you have the worship leader, and he's kind of the talent, and mm -hmm. so uh, all the musicians just rotate on his team, right? right? Uh, and we decided that it, we are really passionate about leadership development and the mm -hmm. gifts that God has for people in our church. And we believe that there are others beside me that should be leading worship bands mm -hmm. and uh, exercising those gifts of leadership and shepherding our mm -hmm. church and, um, and musical gifts. And so we create bands. We ran a year-long worship academy mm -hmm. where a bunch of students, people who are aspiring worship leaders, learned about leadership, theology. Uh, they learned about music, um, how to how to shepherd the church uh, yeah. publicly on stage. Yeah. You had what, like 12, 10 or 12? Uh, 16, 16 students. Yep. Cool. And uh, so those guys were great. And several of them are are starting bands. We have some of them now. Um, so I, I lead one band. Uh, uh, TJ Miller, who's uh, one of our interns, mm -hmm. he leads another band. Um, and then we have uh, Michael Morelli is actually the newest uh, band he led just uh, uh, recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we have a few others also mm -hmm. in the works. But the ideas around that community and culture mm -hmm. is what happens 
when instead of having a random guy, gal plugged into the team, what happens when you take a group of musicians that always play together? Right. They love one another, they serve each other, they pray for the church together, they yeah. arrange music together, they work together as a team, they share a heart for the church when mm -hmm. they lead worship. Mm -hmm. What kind of what kind of worship leading comes out of a group sure. like that yeah. rather than just a collection of individuals? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the culture piece of that is, is that they create music that is birthed out of their own heart. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's like, hey, the, the church uh, has this style of music, so you know, play these songs and do it this way. Mm -hmm. They have their own experiences, their own right. backgrounds, and this is... And that's connecting with people and that's, in the variety of different people and experiences in the audience as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, because that's the church, right? Yeah. Jesus, when he builds his church, he saves people from every cultural corner mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't say, lose your cultural right. identity Melt to become this, yeah. some... You every know, tribe, tongue, and nation, yeah. Every yeah. tribe, it's tongue, and nation. Even in the new creation, it seems to be yes. retained, yeah. Yeah, and so how great would it be if our worship reflected that diversity, yeah. but yet the thing that unifies us, the only thing that unifies us is the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so that's what these bands accomplish, and it creates a, it creates a new kind of culture. The way that they use music, mm -hmm. because gospel is at the center of what we do, yeah. Music has a way of coming alongside truth and bringing passion to it, yeah. bringing a certain life to it. Uh, you could Stored say... the affections. Yeah, it's the, the it's affections. The affections. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, you could easily <coughs> tell somebody just in a monotone voice, Jesus paid the price for your sins. But to say something with passion, to like, and you, when you preach, you, you, know, you make an illustration or you tell a joke or you tell a, a personal story, um, the same way our musicians can take the cultural corner they come from, if they play yeah. rock music or folk music or pop music, and they can use those idioms mm -hmm. in the music yeah. to be able to greater express the central truths of our faith. Yeah. And that's gonna connect with deep, different people at different points in time across the sure. span of the culture of our church. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. What are, you, uh, what are you excited about? What's, what's, what's happening, what's coming down the pipe? Yeah, well, I'm excited for our church to see more of our bands. Mm -hmm. I think um, they're working really hard. Mm -hmm. um, they're seeking Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. like I said, in their small communities, and they want to create great music that is going to lead our church in worship. Yeah, so I'm excited for people to see more of, of mm -hmm. what our church, how they are serving and stepping up and rising yeah. up to these positions of leadership. Um, and then I'm excited also for... Um, kind of the outside of Sunday mm -hmm. stuff that we do, that these these bands are getting together and we want mm -hmm. to record them. Mm -hmm. We want to produce material that is going to bless people in their day to day. They can put it on their iPod, listen to it uh, in the car. Mm -hmm. They can share it with friends. Mm -hmm. um, so some people may not go to a church, but they'll, hey, they'll listen to a track that, hey, listen to this cool song yeah, I like. Yeah. Um, so we're excited about how music, our music ministry can go beyond the four walls yeah. of our Sunday gatherings yeah. and go out into the culture and make an impact. Cool. Yeah. It's good. All right. Well, thanks for spending some time this afternoon talking about worship arts. And uh, we're excited to see how God's using you already, um, specifically around the world of uh, leadership development and pouring into these guys. And I just... Uh, see God using them in all kinds of, even in context that the church doesn't always see. Um, you know, guys and gals being trained up in, at, in leading at Freedom Session and youth ministries and things that the church is even exposed to. Yeah. And why a vast array of people uh, being developed under your leadership. So I want to thank you for that. You're doing a great yeah. job with that. And I uh, look forward to uh, seeing them roll out to the larger church. So thanks for spending some time chatting. And hopefully this helps uh, you guys get to know uh, Pastor Eric a little bit better. Thanks.